and welcome into another interview portion here of the Red Hawk Report. We're joined by Trish Jocelyn of Seattle University Track. Trish, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down with us. Thank you for having me. You were in your senior season. Let's start there. You came over from Charleston where you had a great career. Talk about your time being at a different school and also having great success. Yeah, so um, my first um, initial thought of when I was fi- picking um, schools, um, getting out of high school, I was like, Mom, I'm sorry, but I gotta get outside of Florida. So my first initial thought was like, okay, w- what school is gonna fit best for me? And um, when I chose Charleston, I was like, okay, I'm okay with a small school, small class selections. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna see how it goes. Like, unfortunately, like when I first went off to college, like my first weekend, um, I lost my boyfriend to gun violence. So that definitely just gave me, um, definitely I lost the motivation to wanna keep going for school. And just a lot was going on in my, like being a freshman going off to school. So then afterwards, um, I had my mom come help pack up my room, like, mom, I'm done, like, I'm done. And then it was just something, like, I just heard, like, a voice or, like, my guardian angel saying, no, go back to school. And, you know, the first year was definitely rocky, but afterwards, I want to say, like, my junior year into college, I started enjoying the experience more. And that definitely, um, going to Charleston, I'm glad that it gave me the foundation to where I'm at today now. So I definitely enjoyed going to Charleston. You talked about in that you were in Florida originally. You were a great high school athlete as well. Obviously, you were a college athlete, so you had to be great. But multi-sport athlete, cheerleader, basketball, Mm -hmm. along with track. Do you think being a multi-sport athlete really helped you be a stronger athlete in track? Or, you know, did it just make you all around, you know, a better athlete? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely keeping myself busy with sports. Um, I never really had a break because I went from cheerleading to basketball to track. So with cheerleading, um, definitely helped the flexibility because you have to be flexible to run track, honestly. Basketball, definitely with the endurance, um, having that power to come out blocks, all that. And then it made it more easier for me with track. So um, in high school, I did hurdles. So I was like, hey, well, I can do a herky in cheerleading, so why can't I just do a hurdle? So just <laughs> hurdle over it, like herky over the um, hurdles. So being doing multi-sports definitely helped. That's why I'm always like pushing. Like I have younger siblings, so like my youngest right now is still in high school. So I'm like, you better be doing all these sports. Like, why are you not doing track? And he's like, it's too much work. I was like, but it'll make you better in football. And now he's starting to understand that because you need that speed also on the field. So doing multi-sports definitely do help. After your time at Charleston, you talked about how impactful that was. Mm -hmm. Then you transferred here to Seattle University, pretty much the other side of the country. What made you choose Seattle University? Primarily, um, everybody knows Seattle. And like all the little shows that I watch, I've always learned so much about Seattle, Washington. And um, learning about this um, when the Black Lives Matter movement happened, watching how the Seattle Police Department handled it. I was just more looking into when I was choosing my grad school, I was more primarily looking to like the police departments. And um, Seattle Police Department was one of, one of the top picks that I wanted. And the more I was looking into it, and then when the Black Lives Matter protests and all that was going on, I was like, yeah, mom, I think I want to go on the West Coast. She's like, what? No, you're not going that <laughs> far. And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, mom, but I feel like also it'd be good for me academically and as well as athletic. And I started realizing that most of the people that run the same events as me that are professional athletes, they're on the West Coast. And I'm like, you know, the distance people are more on the East Coast. And when I was competing more, also being at Charleston, I wasn't really seeing like top athletes or professional athletes. I was like, okay, well, let me start looking more into it. So tapping into Allison Felix, like, and then it was another, um, like right now I am, there's a Haitian woman that's in Arizona. So it's like all the little coasts of West Coast. I was like, well, I wanna, wanna do something that's best for me academically and athletically. And I just felt like coming over here on the West Coast was like my best decision. And so far I haven't regretted it cause I'm getting the work that I need and East Coast play a lot of favoritism. So I was just like, here, it's like, everybody can be winners. Everybody can put in the same work, so. Well, we're yeah. definitely happy you're here, obviously, doing Thank great you. things with Seattle <laughs> University. Talking, going off that, you talked about the police departments and this and that. You are a criminal, you are studying criminal justice. Mm-hmm, correct. 
what made you get into criminal justice and wanting to research police departments and doing all of that? Well, growing up, I've always really been into police work. Like, um, my dad would put me in like police camps and stuff like that. But then once I got into high school, I started like chasing the dream that moms wanted for me. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just go for nursing. Uh, and then when um, graduating high school, I graduated my CNA license, my EKG license. So I was like, okay, I got a good little push start to where into my nursing career field. And then once I started doing the nursing classes, I was like, this is not something that I'm gonna <laughs> enjoy for the rest of my life. This is like something that I'm gonna have to do for the rest of my life potentially. And then it was like watching um, my ex case, like his case just go cold. I was just like, this is crazy. Like I can, I wanna make a difference in the cold cases. I wanna be able to help our black community understand like, you know, the relationship of trusting. Cause that's where we kind of lose it. So it's like wanting to um, go into the criminal justice field just played more part of my background experiences. Uh, we yeah. appreciate it. Obviously athletes that speak up, use their voice and use, I think your intelligence to really help the community and people of color, that's obviously very huge. So we definitely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and more fun part of the interview and getting off that, we do have a few goofy questions to end the interview. So hopefully okay. we can catch you off guard a little bit. Um, with the Olympics going on currently, mm -hmm. um, Winter Olympics, not what you would compete in, obviously, <laughs> but if you had to compete in the Winter Olympics, what mm -hmm. sport would you choose? Um, I would do like snowmobiling, like something like that. Cause I honestly, like right now I'm, like itching to go to um like do some snow tubing out here because we don't see snow on the yeah, uh, especially say. in florida <laughs> so i'm like you know doing some snowmobiling or anything of that sort like i would love to do that okay mm -hmm. so outside of that a very common question mm -hmm. is a hot dog a sandwich yeah it's in bread <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you know it is in bread so it is a sandwich <laughs> did you grow up putting it on bread too because mm -hmm. yeah see that, yeah. i think that's just that's different for other people so i respect that thank mm -hmm. you it is a sandwich um okay last question is it wrong for vegetarians to eat animal crackers it's in the shape of an animal right yeah so yeah, yeah i mean it's wrong right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> it's like philosophical, right? You're yeah. Like, you still can't eat animals, right? Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. We agree on all those. So I appreciate that. Well, mm -hmm. thank you, Trish, for joining us here on the Red Hawk Report. And That's good fine. luck for the rest of the season. And we appreciate you sitting down. Thank you. Slow feet don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to see our full interview with Trish Jocelyn, be sure to tune in to the Red Hawk Report Mondays at 5 p.m. on KXSU 102.1 and worldwide on KXSU.org.